Now, I've added a WHERE clause to this SQL. But let's take even a better look at this. Notice after the word SELECT, I've got all of my columns I want on the report, starting with DEPNO, separated by a comma, but I've got them on just a couple of lines there. You can write your SQL all on one line if you decide, but we usually format it better for visibility or if others are going to be using it, or if we come up with an error, we can find it easy. But I've got my SELECT list and I've got a couple of lines there from my table name. Now, look at the WHERE clause. You might ask yourself, you know, we're after WHERE departments in 200 and 400. Is it going to calculate everything in that table and then throw it out unless it's 200 and 400? These systems are far too smart for that. They're going to say, look, Go find all of the people in department 200 and 400. Now, now you got those rows. Let's do our calculations, and then they'll present the results. So understand, when you put a WHERE clause in that limits the rows, that's the first thing they do in aggregation. Limit the rows, then do the calculations. So as you can see here, here are our results. We got two rows. Of course we did, because we're going to get one row per department, and we want department 200, we want department 400, and that's the only thing coming back on the report. Here you see the having statement in red. Having account asterisk greater than two. We had a WHERE clause in here for a reason. We only wanted departments 200 and 400 to come back. A having clause is a little bit like an additional WHERE clause once the aggregate totals have been calculated. So for example, I might say, I want to know what the average salary per department is around here because we have to make a few cutbacks. But I don't want to see anything where the average salary is 20000 a year. I want to see where it's $1.5 million a year because those are the big salaries that we're going to get the best hit on. So a having clause is the only way you can actually get the query to run, bring back all of the aggregates, and just before the aggregates come to the report, they go, stop, there's a final check. We're checking those totals. And we want to only see where the count of the people in the department were greater than two, and that's why there are only going to be one row come back based on this having clause. Take your time here. I've got three things for you. I've got the query at the top with the having statement, having a count asterisk greater than two. Remember, we're grouping by department number, so it's going to look for anybody that has more than two people in that department. So, before the having statement was run, we had two rows come back, department 200 and 400, which were in our WHERE clause. And now, their intermediate results have come back. The having clause says that get calculated. It did good. Stop. And then it's going to look at this and it says, hey, this row's got department 200. They've got a count of two. Oh, no, it had to be greater than two. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to eliminate that row. So a having clause is almost like an additional where clause or an additional filter after the aggregate totals have been calculated. This lesson brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. Need a query tool that makes joins easy? The Nexus has a join builder that turns the most complex joins into child's play. The Nexus Query Chameleon, making connections easy again. Visit coughingdw.com for more information. Hi, this is Tom Coughing. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit subscribe to make sure you are kept up to date on all our videos.